Um, it's great to have you with us, Mark. Uh, Mark spoke at graduation last night and is doing a ministry conference today and has taken some time out just at lunchtime to have a brief conversation uh, with me about congregational singing. Um, good to have you with us, Mark. Gary, it's great to be here. I love your new facilities. <laughs> yeah, we're very grateful. Yeah. Very thankful to God for mm -hmm. these. Um, I was in Capitol Hill um, in church with you at the start of December and the thing that our family were really quite kind of struck with uh, was the, the sheer volume kind of passion of the singing. Mm. Um, I mean, about 900 to 1,000 people in church, yeah. average age. The 30, 30, 29, 30, 38. Yep, so lots of these kind of you know, Gen Y, younger people, and yep. then the music started. And I'm not sure I've ever heard a sound quite like it in, mm. a, in a local church. Has that been... How has that happened? Is that a deliberate thing for you or has that been kind of accidental over the years? Somewhere in between. When I got there, it was a, a normal a normal church, musically speaking, for an elderly congregation of Southern Baptists in the 1990s <laughs> in the US. Yeah. So there was a loud organ, yep. there was a choir, uh, traditional hymns were sung, yep. and the singing was, I honestly, somewhat weak. Yep. Um, the organist retired mm -hmm. and when she retired it wasn't clear who would be able to play the organ and soon it became clear that there wouldn't be an organ I mean the organ was there but there wouldn't be anybody to play the organ and really ever since that building had opened in January of 1912 I'm pretty sure an organ had played on every Sunday morning this was a terrifying idea to the older members of the church, which were just about all the members of the church back then. It was about 130 people, mainly in their 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, so, but I, I I can't claim that I had any great plan. Yeah. So it's not like I was deliberate and this is how we're gonna get great congregations of singing. Yeah. Uh, the organ was gonna go silent, and I thought we'll be okay. You know, it's gonna be fine, we'll have a piano. Yeah. So the organ did go silent, and we had the piano, and it's, I don't remember if it was the first Sunday that happened, but it, I think it may have been, if it's not, it was the second or third. The congregation, it's like as soon as they could hear each other singing, yeah. they began to sing out more. Yeah. So the volume of the voices immediately went up. Yeah. And you could tell they were kind of encouraging each other by their singing. And so then as the congregation grew, this effect just continued to increase. I, as a music-y, choir -y kind of guy, I quickly realized what was going on. Yeah. It didn't surprise me, though I hadn't anticipated it. And so I then, who, as the one who did and, did and still does pick the music, yeah. I tried to find things I think would be good for us to sing, yeah. that would be able to sing well, good words and good music. And I would just say the congregation through that and maybe a careful use of encouraging some a cappella stanzas yeah. for people to highlight the parts yeah. on songs with really good parts the people just began to really relish hearing each other sing and as that practice increased in fervor uh, along with I think them learning new and older sometimes better hymns and the number of people in the congregation growing and becoming younger the whole thing just got better and better and better and I was saying to somebody the other day that uh, you know, I was just at our church on Sunday uh, I, I love the sermons here but I think I'm more encouraged by the singing than yeah. I am by the sermons. Yeah. You know, the sermons are very good. But, yeah. yeah, the sermon uh, was great the day we were know, there, yeah. but it was the it was the music the, that I, the singing that made an impression. And I, you know, I get it every Sunday, but I still feel yeah. I'm just moved. Yeah, yeah, to tears off. Yeah. So you you just said you you still choose the music. Yep. Uh, I, I I I kick it off. I I plan four services uh, four months at a time. Yeah. Of yeah. the morning and evening services. But then the week of, on the Tuesday before, the whole pastoral staff will gather, will scrub the service, and yep. they'll, they'll replace a bunch of my songs. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen that in action. Yeah, I mean, no, I have, it's fine. <laughs> Your staff do. <laughs> yeah, they're fine. But, but you do, you do have a, you have a music to what do you call Matt? Music we don't know. He's just a, he's just a pastoral assistant. He's he just a pastoral assistant. We don't he just have happens a, to be musical. So that's right. Have, yeah. So when Matt goes, we will not find another PA with musical. Right. That's just something he can do. Yeah. That's I get the impression that's quite unusual for the late the senior pastor of a large church to still be the guy yeah. who chooses the songs. Yes, I think it is, but I'm I'm a picky kind of guy. Yeah. So I, 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 th I think that the 
the the songs, the content of the songs, and even the, how the song is going to sound, really contributes to what you're trying to do in the service, what the yep. text is about. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very appropriate matter of the elders' attention. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what are the kind of principles that you that that are informing the choices that you that you make? Is it true? Is it well known? Because it's good if it is. Yep. Uh, is the is the melody singable? Are there good parts to it? Uh, if it's not, if, if it's, a, it's a good hymn, but it's not well known, then we have three songs we sing while the congregation is coming in. Yeah. As people are seated, we call preparation music. Yeah. And I'll just throw a hymn in there, like one that we're we're learning. We'll do that three Sundays in a row. Yeah. So the congregation will learn it, and then we'll retire it for a little while. And, yeah. Um, I try to keep the sort of canon of songs that we use growing. Yep. and fresh yep. so if we love in Christ alone or it is well I'll be super careful about how often we sing it yeah I'll try to keep it back generally and only let it out every once in a while yeah you know so if, if you sing it if you sing a hymn much more for a year on average say much more than once a month on average yep. I think it'll begin to get threadbare even the yep. best of hymns yeah so I think you really have to be careful or what will happen is a new hymn will come out his mercy is more and yeah. you'll want to see it like every service and people are so excited and by the seventh week in a row it's feeling a little thin and by the yeah. tenth week it's people are done with this thing yeah and so in, in order to keep all of them more special and working we're pretty careful about not putting any one of them, even the best ones out too often yeah so we consequently have a fairly large canon of hymns or yeah. songs that we sing we probably have a, a larger kind of can of like 600 and of any you know any year there'll be like probably two or three hundred yeah. we would use in a year okay. what I mean how would you articulate the kind of style or feel that you're going for because I, I know you know of course it's content driven but yeah. is it purely content driven or are you you're trying to kind of pitch the overall kind of uh, I'm, I'm trying to have it pretty mirror yeah. In the sense that we've got a piano and a guitar, yep. and a, two or three or four vocals up front. Yep. But even those, we don't have the microphone turns up real high, yep. because we well, don't want it to dominate yeah. the congregation. We just, it's all accompaniment. It's yep. it's there to enhance to bring out the flavor of the singing yep. of the congregation. Yep. So anything they do that's going to off put the congregation or confuse them or cause the congregation to be more dependent upon them, we don't want that. Yep. We want the congregation getting used to singing and hearing themselves sing and hearing each other sing and being able to exult in the words of that they're singing and and uh, even in the sort of feel of the song so that's what we're trying to encourage and everything we're doing is toward that end and so I'm looking for songs that are sort of mere musically or that we can do so we can't get deep into any one kind of style but we can have a lot of different styles a little bit you can do with a piano and a guitar yeah um, so anything that requires a very heavy kind of orchestration or a, a gigantic band, well, we yeah. can't really do that. Yeah. Uh, where the singing is just kind of a melody line that comes along like on the radio on a pop song yeah. for little bits in what's basically a pretty thickly instrumental piece. Well, we're not doing that. Yeah. Um, but it could be a very traditional hymn like Holy, Holy, Holy. Yep. Or it could be a uh, Twyla Paris in the 1980s, We Will Glorify. Yeah. You know, or it could be a Keith Getty. Yeah. Or it could be a traditional African-American yeah. uh, hymn, Precious yeah. Lord, Take My Hand. So we're, we're trying to do all kinds of different ones. Scottish yeah. settings of Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah it's great. And the, you're even gathering. Yeah. That kind of prayer, was it? Prayer well, meeting. Yeah. yeah, the prayer meeting on the Sunday evening. Yeah. Uh, how many songs do you normally <clears throat> sing at the start? Five at the beginning, and there'll be a hymn at the end to end. Yeah. 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 Any, Five in a row. Yep. Yeah, any thought? I, I mean, it was brilliant. So, yeah. But from my recollection, I think there were kind of four traditional hymns yeah. and um, Jesus Thank You. I think yeah. there was a song yeah. there. But that was that was a substantial block of singing. Yeah. What's the thinking behind that? We love to sing. Uh, we're about to spend time hearing about what's going on and praying about it. So this is a good way for us just to encourage each other as we look to the Lord in song, build each other up. Uh, and so we'll begin by singing from like 5 to 5.15. Yep. Yeah. Just one last question. Which... <clears throat> Which trends do you see, you know, as you kind of travel around, as you hear of local churches, which trends in terms of singing, you know, the whole area of, you know, kind of worship and music, which trends encourage you, discourage you, or concern you? 
I think what the consumeristic popular trend has looked like has changed, but that it is the consumeristic sort of pop music trend has been going for my whole adult life. Yeah. And it's continued to go strong. Yeah. And I think it makes the music in the church a poor reflection of the world's music. And I think it's insipid and powerless uh, and tends to undermine the distinctness of the words. Yeah. That doesn't mean I don't want to sing good tunes. I do want to sing good tunes, but I want to sing good tunes that are going to be good for articulating the truth with, and especially ones that you can have parts with, soprano, alto, tenor, bass. Yeah. So I think in our congregation, maybe 10% of people read music. We always print all the music yeah. with, the, with the songs. Yeah. They're in the bulletin so people can read it. But even if, even if only 10% read music, those 10% then are going to make a difference in the other 90%. And some of those 90% are going to hear and they're going to start singing in that part, not because they're so musical, but because it's it's easier for their vocal range. Yeah. Maybe I'm a woman, but I can do alto easier easier than the, the, the soprano. Or I'm a man and I can do the tenor easier than just singing the, yeah. the you know, melody down a, yeah. uh, um, an octave. Do you think, is that something, um, I mean, my guess is, you know, in your church, fairly kind of white collar in Australian terms, so... Yeah. You know, a lot of people certainly working, not exclusively, but working, yeah. no. But you know, obviously, a lot of people working for government. That's I mean, right. You're a couple hundred meters from the capital. I mean, it's not. Right. It's not yeah. a surprise. Yeah. yeah. Well, Do we wouldn't think, have any idea of what a meter was, just to be yeah, clear. Sorry. Yeah. Unless it's like something that tells you how much gas you've been <laughs> using in your house or for parking. <laughs> but we're probably it's, yeah about two thousand like feet. Large about two thousand feet. Yes, two thousand feet, feet from the capital <laughs> building. Um, Do you think? Do you think that's a culture? You know, being able to provide kind of you know, the full musical score, if you like, for, yeah. each, for each song. Do you think that's something that you were able to do in your culture, or would you see that as having kind of white or... No, I'm not sure. Uh, I know that nobody would have advised me this was a good thing to do when I did it. <laughs> and I've often been advised since then, like, why don't you stop doing this? Yeah. And yet it seems to edify individuals, yeah. families, they'll yeah. take the things home, save them, yeah. use them in their yeah. in their quiet times or with their family worship. Yeah. Uh, so, ah, you know, there's... If it ain't broke. Yeah, well, and, and why not have the bulletins that are that large? Because, you know, paper's a renewable resource, right? And, you know, you need to help the tree growers in Oregon and Washington State, so, yeah. Glad, glad to see you're well thought through. You that. know, every aspect uh, of it. Well, we need to go back upstairs. All right. But I'll let Mark get up, uh, get up front again. Mark, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Gary.